Okay, everyone, we'll uh, start away. Uh, my own name is uh, William Harmon, National Talent Officer for Ladies Football, with a coach, uh, with my remit as Coach Education. I'm also joined by my, my colleague, Kieran Murta. Kieran, would you like to say hi? How you going, guys? I'm Kieran Murta, also the Ladies Development Officer. Um, looking forward to the presentation later along with William. So, yeah, looking forward to a good night's uh, chat and engagement with it. Excellent. So, guys, the webinar tonight will be approximately 70 minutes. Uh, could be a bit early, won't go any further than that. Um, just in relation to just a few uh, minor things before we start off is, in the, if you have any questions or queries throughout the presentation, there's a Q&A function at the end of your toolbar. So please put any questions or queries into that function, and Kiran will monitor that throughout the session. And also, guys, if we're doing any task work through the presentation, we'll use the chat function. So that's what we we'll use for the for the tasks. So look, if anybody's any issues with their with their sound or anything like that, just leave the webinar and come back in. But hopefully, no one will have any issues with with saving. Okay, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll progress on. So tonight's webinar is focusing on coaching the tackle in ladies football. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. We'll have a, a theoretical and we'll also have a few practical ideas for you going through. So we hope you enjoy this evening's webinar. By the end of this webinar, you'll be able to hopefully define what a good tackle or good contact looks like, to state the rule that governs the tackle, what is deliberate contact in the high tackle in ladies football. We'll also demonstrate how to coach a tackle with a few videos and to identify the key technical points in relation to deliberate contact. And that means in terms of the high tackle and charging. So hopefully we'll be able to cover all those areas in the, in, in, in the, coming, in the coming evening. So I suppose, what are we ultimately trying to achieve with Trump the webinar? And I suppose everybody, uh, irrespective of who you are within the game, we're always looking for consistency. And with consistency, we feel, you know, we need to probably have a better understanding of the detail. And in the detail, when we, in, the, in this context, in terms of the, the coaching the tackle, we're talking about the rule book. So in the rule book, the clarity around in terms of detail, in terms of what's a foul, what isn't a foul, yellow card, red card, and so on. That's where the real detail is in terms of the rules of our game. But then there's the clarity aspect in terms of everybody here tonight is probably looking for a bit more clarity around certain rules, in particular in relation to coaching the tackle and other elements like deliberate contact and charging. So tonight you're going to use the education as a webinar, but also you're going to use our coach education courses like our fundamentals, like our level one, uh, even like the, the, the club mentor rules workshop, where you want to just get more clarity around the detail which is in the rules. And hopefully then we can get a bit more consistency and a better flow to our game going forward if we all can achieve that. We all have a role to play uh, as referees. You know, without referees, we wouldn't have no game. And there's some excellent work being done by, by our, our referee development par uh, uh, department, working with our referees, trying to raise the standards in terms of what we're trying to achieve from a referee point of view. But we, I suppose, all we can do tonight is control how we as coaches I suppose, coach our players. And we have a role and responsibility to coach our players within the rules of the game. And I always say, I suppose, in order to win a game, you need to have the ball. And in order to win the ball, if you tackle well, you'll have the ball more. So the importance of tackling well is vitally important in order to have possession of the ball. But it also kind of gives you a bit of control in terms of how you dictate the game. I suppose we hear a lot of kind of things in terms of, the, oh, the referee probably is not consistent in their delivery. But I think that's, all, that's an uncontrollable from your perspective. Our perspective is just focusing on, well, how can we coach our players win the game? And if they, co if they tackle well, then they more than likely will not be given away a foul. So that we, we, we'll go after it uh, as the evening goes on. And then your responsibility as a coach is to also, I suppose, educate the players. And by good coaching, you're educating the players. And if the players are educated and they're, they're tackling well, then again, that comes back to that consistency in what we're trying to achieve and a better flow to our game. So in the chat function, if you don't mind, if I was to ask you straight out, and you know, what challenges do you experience currently in relation to coaching or practicing the, 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 the tackle in ladies football? What would they be? So in the chat function, just throw in there what comes to your mind straight away in, in terms of you as a coach in your club or in your, in your age group, what challenges do you experience currently? So Kieran's going to monitor that for me, and he'll just let me know what's coming back from the, from the chat. So you can pop into the chat function there, guys. What challenges do you experience currently regarding coaching or practicing the tackle in ladies football? Is there much coming back, Kieran? Not bad so far, Will. Oh, they're coming in. Uh, here we're coming out. 
So uh, what seems to be coming back in the early stages, Kiran? Uh, people think uh, it's boring drill to coach. Uh, footwork, good, getting the footwork in the, in the very place to, to perform the tackle. Uh, it's difficult to know exactly what tackle is allowed in terms of, I think they're going on the contact maybe there, but that, uh, that's from Aiden. Uh, how can you approach, how, how can you play good drills to to define the tackle? Very good, and I suppose boring is is, is an interesting one. I suppose uh, it's probably along with the block, probably two skills are not being yeah. practiced enough, and I, I suppose we have to ask the question: Why is that? And maybe it's because of the competence and the confidence to, to coach tackle because of understanding well what is exactly we should be looking for. So we're going to cover that through tonight. Another one about the coaching drills and, and activities, that's interesting as well. And you'll see, I'll show you a few activities later on. They're very basic in nature, but uh, you know, that's, that's the key to it, is keep it basic and not get too complex in what is it we're trying to do. But I think the key for you as a coach is, what is it does a good tackle look like? What is it you should be watching out for? And how can you spot and fix this key? So I suppose we look at part A and we look at it in more detail in terms of define what does a good contact look like in, in LGFA. And that's important. What does good look like? What rules govern contact in LGFA? And did identify the key coaching points around contact in LGFA in relation to the tackle? And we'll not only look at the near hand tackle, we'll also look at the frontal tackle as well. So we'll look at it from a various angles. So what is the rule? What is the rule that pertains the tackle, and this is the rule in our rule book, going back to the detail earlier on. A player, while holding the ball in her body, cannot be legally dispossessed. So if a player has the ball in her body, she cannot be legally dispossessed. You cannot dispossess the player when the ball is in the body. And i show you an example of that shortly. So any attempts to do, do so shall result in a free being awarded to the team. And that's interesting. And think about that for a second. Because how many times in the sideline we're probably always promoting, come on, tackle or put a hand on or get more physical. When our game probably, you know, it's probably be important to be more smarter in how we go about our business. So just bear that in mind and I'll bring that up again later on. So when tackling to dispossess a player, it's vitally important that it's timed. When the player in possession has the ball out of the body. When I mean the ball out of the body, that's when they come solo, when they hop, when they actually physically bring the ball out of the body. So you can tackle at any stage when the ball is out of the body, okay? It can be a hop, it can be a solo, wherever it may be. The ball must be knocked from the opponent's hand by flicking it with one of both hands, and we'll show you that shortly. Uh, I'll give you a visual on that one. And you cannot use the fist at any time. So it needs to be an open hand. So there are things just be aware of, and we'll go through them again as we go through the webinar. So I'm going to show you what good looks like. I think it's important. Here is a, is a, a video uh, that will show you a near a tackle that was done by, by the Mayo player on the Cork player. So I'm just going to play it here and hope it'll all work out for us. So, sorry, apologies, my fault there though. That was my fault. Apologies. We'll just play it again. I'm just going to pause it here. This is the player that's going to tackle the Cork player. This is the player who's going to do a great tackle. Now she's brought 15, 15, 20 meters behind the Cork player. And let's just see how she tackles the Cork player. The desire and the commitment is, is phenomenal. Oh, I'm gone back again. Apologies. Okay. I leave a roll this time. So again, let's watch it. She should have real desire, real commitment, but real commitment to tackle the ball near hand, dispossess the ball, doesn't get away free in its own zone, and now they can go and attack. That's what good looks like. And I always say when you're coaching players, always show them what good looks like. So for some players, they might need to see that. So a video like this would be very beneficial to show them this is what good looks like. She could have very well, after running 20 meters, committed a foul by putting a hand on the shoulder or on the arm and committed a foul in the scoring area. And they would have got the, a free shot of goals and that's a point down. But look at the difference of a good tackle could make. They won the ball back. And as I said, you can only win the game when you have the ball in your position. And now they're off and they're going, they're going attacking, which is phenomenal. 
I'm just going to show you another example. And this is a different one now. So that was a near hand tattoo, but this is the Dublin player using the far hand. And we'll talk about this uh, down the road again in, in the webinar. But here is another good example of a good tattoo. <laughs> So we we'll just watch it again. So here is the ball is out of the body. The Dublin player times her tackle really well. Now this time she's using the near hand, very careful what the other hand is doing, and dispossesses the player of the ball. Again, good timing, good desire, desire to commit to tackle well, but also waiting for the moment to tackle the player uh, when the ball is out of the body. Okay, so we'll just show that again. And now they're on the attack because of the ability to tackle well, patience in the tackle. Now they have the ball back. Now they can do damage because they have the ball in their hands. You can't do damage to the opposition if you don't have the ball in your hands or if you continually give away freeze, which will hand them an easy possession. So who's fooling who? So I'm gonna just let you give a look at this one here. Interesting um, photo here. So we have the player in white and we have the player in blue. The player in white is the possession of the ball. So, what I mean by who's fooling who? So, if we just progress it on, here. If you see here, the player in white is in possession of the ball. She has the ball in her body. So, as going back to the rule earlier on, she cannot be tackled when the ball is in the body because it's a foul. That's what our rule states very clearly. The player in blue is tackling her with both hands and has both hands on the body. So, therefore, that's a foul because the player has the ball in the body and she's tackling with two hands. However, give a look at the player in the white. She's using her forearm to push the player who's tackling off her. That too is a foul. So now there's two fouls happening here in the same scenario as we see. So pushing off in A's football is a foul. So who is fooling who? And I suppose in this situation, it comes down to the referee. The referee will deem who has fouled first. So if the tackler fouled the player on the ball first, then it's the free to the player on the ball. But if the player on the ball pushed the opponent prior to the tackle, then it's the free to the player in blue. So just be very cognizant of that, that a push off is also a foul, uh, and it's who's fouling who, and who fouled first will be deemed where the free goes. And probably will it just come in that in real time for a referee it takes a real real clever referee who's really up to speed with the game to to acknowledge that the player in white actually committed the foul force by leaning with the elbow yeah it's and, when, and i suppose that goes back to the tough job referees have doesn't yeah. it clear on do you yeah, know what i mean yeah. because you know the game is so fast now our, our game is getting so so fast the referee has to make a split decision on who yeah. foul first and, you know, that's just some, and it all depends on the position of the referee, but here, you're mm -hmm. right, though, uh, the player in the position could have fouled first, and, and first. therefore, and a lot of coaches probably say, well, what happened there, referees? Because, again, I got a lack of understanding that of the rules of the game, that that is a foul as well. Pushing off is a foul. So just something to be aware of. So, yeah, yeah. good point, Kieran, good point. So here is that one-on-one. -on -one. So that's with where a player is running at you. And that, I looked at the, uh, the questions prior to the webinar regarding, you know, what's an area of how do you tackle a player that's coming at you at 100 miles an hour? And we look at that shortly. Don't worry about that. But here again, look at the player, the, the Cork player. He's looking to get past the player in blue, the Dublin player. But look at the foul. The ball again is in the body. So therefore, there is no need for the defender to tackle it because the ball is in the body. So no matter what she tries to do, she's going to foul the player. And as you see, her hand is on her shoulder. So it's a free, okay? So we're going to look at later on, it was okay, different scenario. But the question I would ask is, was there a need to tackle in that situation? The player, if she knew the, bear, the ball in the body, right, okay, what could I have done differently here? Okay, not to give away free, but maybe push the, push the player where she doesn't want to go. Maybe, and here possibly just don't dive in, don't dive in, just push her where she wants to, doesn't want to go and maybe wait for my opportunity. So again, we'll look at that in more detail shortly, but again, just interesting, if the ball is in the body, there's no point tackling because it's a foul. Because you're more likely going to put the hand on the shoulder or hand on the arm, and you're going to be given a free against you. So the patient tackler is the most important tackler. And we'll go through that in more detail. So 
if I move it on. So what do we learn from part A? If there's anything we learn from part A is, is the rule. A pillar while holding the ball in to her body cannot be legally dispossessed. That's plain as day, black and white. Any team to do so shall result in a, a, a result in a free against your team. So that's if you learned anything in the first part of the webinar tonight, that's the most important part. When the ball's in the body, you can't be legally dispossessed. So therefore it needs to be timed. Okay, you need to wait for that opportunity. You can't use the fist and you need to use the open hand. So that's a I good was, I was, Well, I was like saying when I'm coaching when the, the, the player in possession presents the ball, either the hop, the solo, the go to kick, when that player presented, that's your opportunity, your time and your execution to get in and get the tackle in and dispossess the, the attacking attacker with the ball. So I use and the word presenting the ball. Presenting the ball, and we're going to show clips of that. And I think Kiran, you had a very good point, though. It's very hard instance for a, a defender or an opponent to, or attacker. And, and I just want to make a point. Every player in your team needs to be able to tackle well, whether she's the corner forward or the goalkeeper. Every team. We sometimes have this perception that it's the defender. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a clip here where, where I think one of the corner forwards is back around the half back line and she gave away a fry. But you hit a good point there, and, and we'll go back to the point you made, there's a patience is key though. Okay, there's an eagerness to, 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 to be physical. There's an eagerness to, to get the hands in. But sometimes, is that the right thing to be doing at the right time based on the scenario that presents itself in the field of play? Just think about that. So we're going to move on to part B. And now we're going to look at three possible tackling scenarios. So we're going to look at tackling from the side. We're going to look at how do you tackle from behind, if you're like the girl from Mayo, which she did exceptionally well. And how are you going to tackle like with a player running at you? And I think that's the big one. The player coming at you at serious pace. How do you not give away a foul in that situation? So we look at that. So now what I want you to do is, if you have a pen and paper, or just even observation, I'm going to ask you to look at three players in this clip. I'm not going to comment on the clip. We'll come back to it again later on. But there's three players I want you to watch. There's number eight here, the midfielder. Okay, so the girl in blue has the ball. She has possession of the ball. She wants to go direct route to goal. The, and the, the most direct route to goal is in a straight line. So she wants to go in a straight line. The midfielder is the number one. So watch what the midfielder does. Here is the wing back, number seven. Now bear in mind, her number 10 is out here. So her opponent is out here. It's interesting how she's distracted by number 10. So here is number seven, but also, remember I spoke earlier on about the forwards. There's a girl back here on the half back line. She's number 15, okay? So I'm gonna play the clip twice for you. I want you to be, if you were to coach in this scenario, what advice would you give these players if you were to present this clip back to them after the game? That being the, the, the team in the white. What advice would you give? So I'm gonna play it, jot down what you see, and we'll come back to it later on when we go through all the various scenarios, okay? So here we go. I'm just going to play it here. So in this clip, they gave away two fouls. So the number seven gave away a foul, and the number 15 gave away a foul. So I'll just show it you one more time. If you were to coach, you have to give feedback. If you were to give one point to number eight, one coaching point to number seven, and one coaching point to number 15, what would they be based on the clip? So I'll show you again. Okay. I'm going to leave that with you. And we'll come back to it. Let's see what you've jotted down or what your thoughts are based on now the information we're going to give now in the next few slides. So it's one of the key principles in relation to tackling. Okay. So the best tackler is the patient tackler. And this is a very important point, the patient tackler, okay? So wait for your time for your contact. The player has something to do within every four steps. They have to bounce the ball. They have to solo the ball. They have to do something after four steps. They can't hold in their possession. So the patient tackler is important. Tackling with confidence will be at the right time. When the ball is out of the body, when the player's off balance, or when they have their head down. But always coach your players never to dive in. And here's very important because 
You're coaching your players to assess the scenario they're in at the moment. Think about that Tipperary versus Sligo game. But we'll come back to shortly. Think about the scenarios that presented to those three defenders or those three tacklers. And what would they have done differently? Body positioning is important. The player tackling should try and dictate the play. I always say the player who's tackling should dictate the play. Think about number eight, number seven, and number 15. What could they have done differently? So you're able to get the opposition to get the head down. To get the head down. When their head's down, get it down, okay? Push them where they don't want to go. If they're left-legged, push them onto the right side. If they're right-legged, push them onto the left side, okay? If they're very proficient and kick off both legs, then push them somewhere where you're waiting and you're going to delay and deny until the help comes with your teammates. The desire and commitment is important, okay? To tackle the ball, not the person. And think about the sidelines and coaches going, go, get contact, get ties, put your hand up. Are we sending the right message when we're sending those signals out to our players? Who are actually saying the desire and commitment and patience are more important when you want to dis dispossess the ball? So that's, that's an interesting one. What we're promoting is get your players to tackle smart. Tackle smart. Wait for the opportunity. When it comes, bang, take the ball off them. Now you've ball in possession. Now you can do something with it. Okay, so let's see this in more detail. So I'm going to go through the head, hands, feet of the near hand tackle here. Okay, and I'm just going to go, I'm going to show it to you, and we'll go through it. So here it is. I'm going to show the clip. All these clips, guys, are available on our website on www.ladiesgaelic.ie. So they're all available. So let's watch it here. Okay, we'll just play it again. We have uh, two guys practicing here, and I'm just going to stop it. Okay, the eyes on the ball. Think about this. Eyes on the ball, tackling with the near hand, waiting for the ball to come out the body, and she steps in with her near leg. I come to later on about deliberate contact. Ladies football, there's going to be contact. It, it, it's, a, it's a team sport, there's going to be contact. But it can't be deliberate. So when you're tackling, there may be contact with hip to hip because you're stepping across. But it's not deliberate because you're going genuinely for the ball. Okay? Now, if you tackle the player with the hand on the shoulder or something, that's fouling. Okay? So I'm just going to show it to you again. Kieran, can you hear me while I talk through this? You can? Yeah, you're fine, man. Yes. Perfect. So let's watch it again here. So I'm the ball, wait for the other body and tap it away. Okay, I'm just going to show that again. Okay, and we move it on. So I in the ball, wait for the ball of the body and tap it. Step in. There's going to be a small bit of contact, but it's not deliberate. Okay, so watch it again. I in the ball, wait for your time, tap it away, step in. No foul committed. I probably will, just to come to talking about what the, the trend of this possession, you're tapping the ball in your path instead of the attacker's path as such. That's the girl's trying to do. That's, and, that's, and we're going to hit that again shortly in terms of promoting that, Kiron. And that's, that's an excellent point to make. Very good. Yeah. So now look at this. I'm this surfing you, say. This is, this is my serve today. Um, I, in the chat function, you don't want to throw the question here, Kiron, at you. In the chat function, right? Mm -hmm. in, do you know, in, 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 I'm asking all the coaches this. Do you know in a game scenario where you have a defender? Think about number 15 for Sligo, okay? And a player's coming at you. And you're a tackler and you're a team. In your opinion, which defensive stance is more applicable to a player running at you? Is it A, the square stance, or is it B, the angle stance? So just throw into the chat, from your, in your opinion, which stance do you feel is most applicable when a player's coming at you at 100 miles an hour? Just throw it into the chat function, and clearly you can let me know. And we, don't worry, guys, we'll show you a few clips later on to back up all this stuff, okay? So what's coming through, Kieran? Hopefully the yeah. angle, angle. Yeah, majority's angle. Excellent. And think about the think yeah, about the Sligo. I think, and then John, you know, think about the Sligo player. We'll go back to shortly. The angle. Mm -hmm. It is advocated that if a player is doing one on one and coming at you, it's advocated that you know the the uh, your uh, this kind of the your positioning, your body positioning, your feet are vitally important. Vitally important. So, what we're advocating is, if a player is coming at you, and we'll talk about the jockey position, and we'll show you the jockey position. I, I have two girls practicing this shortly, and it'll all come and make sense shortly, so bear with me. So, what you're trying to do with your feet is a shoulder width apart, okay? 
what I'm going to ask you to do is put one foot in front of the other. So in the video here, on, 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 the, on, your, le on your right, as you see, my legs are shoulder apart, and I have one foot in front of the other. Okay? My left foot is forward, so I'm going to put my left hand forward. That's the, 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 the tackling hand. But if you see my other hand, my other hand is kind of saying, that's where I want the player to go. Okay? And think about this now. I'm on the balls of my feet. Okay? The reason why I advocate on the balls of your feet is because you're active now. You're active. You can now move quickly to the reaction of the opponent, and also you can now react to where they're going to go. So you can move quickly and you can react to the opponent's going to go. Your hands, as I said, if one hand is, if the ball comes out, you can tackle with the near hand or the far hand is guiding where you want to go and also use for balance. But also your eyes are on the ball. But look at the other side, the square. And think about the Sligo player. Shoulders apart, legs flat-footed, hands out. The player coming straight at you is going to go left or right and you're flat-footed. There's no way you will be able to re-engage your feet and body to do that. If you look at my one on the right, my angle of the, uh, of the body. A key to coaching a player coming at you is don't run in a straight line towards them. I would advocate run at a slight angle to push them to where you want them to go. When you approach them, try and get their head down, but don't try to slow down and probably jockey backwards to let them come on to you. Okay, and then it'll give you an opportunity to guide them where you want to go. Hold that top because I'm going to show you that in a few seconds and how that works. Okay, all right, I'll show you all that. Is there anything coming through, Kieran, that you want to, to highlight before I move on? No, no, it's fine. Everybody's watching that so, point there. There's a, there's, a, there's a, I suppose, a chat or discussion out there regarding the far hand versus the near hand tackle. And which is better than the other, you know, and there's a perception that. You can't use the far hand. That's not true. Any good, any tackle, once you tackle the ball without, you know, making contact with players, is a good tackle to me. Whether it's near hand, far hand, as you saw the Dublin player earlier on, she used her far hand, she dispossessed the player without making contact with the player. Excellent. So there's no right or wrong in terms of far hand, near hand. I would advocate you coach both. I would advocate any tackle that you get the ball back without committing a foul is a good tackle. However, there are certain scenarios, and it'll, it will depend on what you use. And we would always, I suppose, advocate the near hand tackle. Why? Why would we advocate that? It's because of two things. You have a reach, you have a better reach, okay, to the ball. You have better balance. You have better balance, you're one step back in the game. If you fall off balance or repair, you know, gets around you. But also, you will possibly won't foul as much as you would do with the far hand. Because the far hand, you have the leading hand, and you have the hand in behind the back who could commit the foul. So from a kind of a fouling perspective, the near hand is probably a higher percentage where you won't give away as many fouls or frees. But is there a right or wrong in both? No. Is one better than the other? Possibly. But that's for you to decide. Can you use both? Of course you can, depending on the scenario that you're in. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a few drills and activities and keep to put all this now into practice. Okay? I hope I'm not going too fast, Kieran. Oh, yeah, so, good. good. The first thing I would say is is don't assume. If you're a cedar coach listening here tonight, don't assume that the players coming into you are know how to tackle or they're good tacklers. They have never, and I say go back to my point earlier on, two skills, I feel in a way, and Kieran, you could be different in different yeah, parts of this. Definitely back up. And, yeah, no, no, two no, skills no. I feel are not coached are, are the tackle and the block. Because, you know, as a conference and conference of coaches to tackle or to coach them, I don't know. So hopefully this webinar will help you tonight and get more but, confidence to that. But see, on that, well, just on that before you go on, sorry. A brilliantly timed near hand tackle or a block is a psychological benefit to a team. It's like worth two points for me because I played as a defender and it gives such a team such a lift to, to kick on. Hence that, that Mio clip at the very, very start. That girl that was out of position, she got back, she intercepted the ball with near hand tackle. That is just as good as an extra point going over the bar for me from a psychological point of view. Totally, totally. And also you have the ball, Kieran. <laughs> as I said, you can only win the game if you have the ball. And, and it could be the winning or losing of games because you can give away a silly foul, even though you can have all the defensive systems you, you want. But if one player, does, or their players can't tackle well, they're going to give away a foul eventually. Mm -hmm. So, but don't assume that. 
And any coaches here who are coaching on their sixes, eights, tens, twelves, underage, then I would advocate strongly practice the tattle early, practice the block early. And I'll show you now a few clips that you can do at any age group, any age group. Start early, get good habits in early, and that's important. Okay. So let's go. Let's go through. So I'm going to use my uh, two girls here. Okay, we've one in green and one, one in the blue, and I'm going to show you how we progress it from very basic to a bit more advanced. But you decide the coach and what you do. These are activities that I probably came up with, you know, about up watching other coaches, trial and error, making mistakes. But let's see. So this is the first one. Okay. So I just play it here. And this is very simple. Walking, getting used to getting the near hand in. Every four steps, step across, tap it. Any age group can do this. Okay? So that is a very exam simple example of just walking beside the player, getting used to get the near hand in, waiting for the ball of the body, and tap it down. Okay? That's simple. So how do we progress that? Now, okay, what we can do is we just, we're going to do a bit of a job. But this time, as she's jogging, I'm just going to say tap the ball. You don't have to dispossess the player. There's no problem at all. Okay, watch it here. So now she's just running beside her, tapping the ball in your hand, and just getting used to that action. That could be done for any age group, guys. Any age group at any, at any stage. Okay? The next one is, okay, is dispossess. So we're going to jog and dispossess. All right? So here we go. So now... I'm going to get her to tap the ball out of the body. Now she's running. So remember now, two, two, two slides ago, she was walking and just tapping the ball. Now she's jogging and she's tapping the ball out. Think about Kiran's point to her on, though. A great tackler should be able to get the ball into their own possession. So let's watch how that looks. Here it is now. Let's progress it on. Here it is. Watch it. Now she's bringing the ball into her body. See how she's progressed onto walking. Now she's tackling well. And now she's bringing the ball into her body. Watch it. Tapping and bring the ball into the body. That's good tackling. Okay? Very good tackling. So how are we going to progress it on now? So there's another drill or activity you could try. This is where now they're coming together. It's just a different variation of the drill. The same concept. They're coming together, waiting for the right time to tackle and win the ball back. So here it is. Wins the ball back and runs away with it. Very simplistic. In nature, these are drills, guys. I have no problem saying I, I coach a senior team myself, that I do myself with the coaching senior teams. These are drills that we do because we need to get the technique right. If we get the technique right, when we get to kind of a more kind of a, uh, uh, physical contact in terms of with more players involved, then we can do better. Okay, so we just watch that again. Here it goes. Oh, sorry, yeah. Apologies, I was clicking the wrong button. There we have it. Going to ball. Now, do you see the progression? Let's maybe do move around again. Now, this is from coming from behind. Think about the male player. How do we practice that in a session? So here's an example of what you could do. So the girl in blue is about two meters behind the girl in green. The same concepts apply. You can only tackle when the ball is out of the body. She gets the tackle in near the end, but she gets a good tackle near the end. But that's a concept of that disadvantage working from the behind. So watch it here. So look at her, she's make up the ground. She, X, so she waited for the solo. She was running with the design, the commitment. She could have very easily grappled and pawed the arm, but she didn't. She knew it was coming to the end and she tackled well. Yeah, just on that, well, a few coaches just on the chat box earlier on thought that they may, they may have been on my own court one. The first video we showed that the player uh, actually tackled from behind. And I just I made the point, I can't remember what coach was. No, she made the ground up, and you could actually see it coming from side on. It did probably look maybe in the video, but if you watch it a few times again, coach, if you get a chance, it definitely is side on. Yeah. Just to clarify, I was right. I thought it was behind. Yeah, exactly. Well, just on that as well, you talk about there, we talk about senior club, senior in the county, you know, talk about maybe systems of play, how you set up repetition, repetition, repetition. This here, tackling. A block and them skills, repetition, repetition, as you say, and gain in the brain at under six, under eight, under ten is vitally important because it could be a game changer. That near hand tackle could win you the league or championship. And exactly, when you think about the sixes, do you know the one I did earlier on where they're walking, tapping the ball? Mm -hmm. Any age group can do that. Yeah. Walking on, tap, walk on, every four steps, tap, every four steps, tap. And here's a very important in terms of you know, the commitment tonight. 
if you look at and go back to your point about the Mayo game and the Cork game, mm-hmm. how do you know it was a good tackle because the ball went the opposite direction? She flicked it, the ball went backwards, mm-hmm. back where she came from. She showed it was a good tackle. So that's a scenario here where you could do that kind of, you know, walking from behind. And also, you should coach this where you're under pressure, you're tired, but you still have to go to good tackle. Can imagine if it's the last minute of the game, you're really tired and you just yeah, want yeah. to tackle? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, so, you know, that's, that's important. So let's move it on now. Okay, now let's go to the jockey. Remember I talk, spoke about earlier about the jockeying and that 1v1 where a player's coming at you. So how do you practice that idea of stopping and just shuttling backwards in a jockeying position? Here we're going to show you a few examples. The two girls doing it linear. Very simple. Look, off the left, off the right. Opposite hand, one hand showing where to go and back again. Very simplistic. You can see they're coming at pace, but then they slow down. So when the girl is coming at you, you don't want a girl going smack back into the player coming. You want them to slow down, take a few steps backwards so they can, they can gain the momentum of the player coming at them. How do we progress this on? Let's watch it. Okay, again, here's something different. Same concept. They're meeting each other in the middle and they're jockeying backwards. Okay, let's watch that concept again. So they're coming in and they're jockeying. Same idea, that idea of pushing off the left, pushing off the right. Now, how do we make it a bit more difficult? At angles, okay, here's jockeying at an angle. Here's the girl in blue, blue, off she goes, look. Now she's gonna push off her left. Now she's gonna push off her right. Now she's going at different angles, okay? So again, it's just a bit more. So the first one is linear, the second one they're coming together, and now they're just going at angles. You'll see how this all comes to play when we go into uh, you know, a 1v1 situation in a minute. Now, this is interesting. So I just asked the girl in green to hop the ball here. I told the girl in green, it's not a, you know, don't worry, it's not about you, I, I'm not worried. You don't have to hop her solo within the rules. I, I just want you to hop the ball every four steps because I want the girl in blue to practice jockeying and getting the opportunity to tackle when the time is right. And let's see what happens. So here she is. Very clever, okay? Now, she's pushing her where she wants to go. She's waiting for her time. She tries here. Okay, she's going to try. Didn't get it. Now, there. So she could have went straight in. Could have ran straight in, died in, put her hands on the girl in green and fouled her. But no, she went in, she jockeyed, and she waited for her opportunity to tackle. I'll just watch it again. Watch it again. She's going fast. She slows down. Now she's in the jockey position. She has control over the girl in the ball now. Total control. The girl in the ball doesn't realize it, but she's totally controlled. The near hand taps his way at the right time. Very well. Like, that's, that's skill. It's a personal thing. That patience, that patience to get the time in and, and get that crack tackle is key. It might not happen the first day or the second day, but it's a key one. It could be the third day, which could be again, come back to the match winner. Which is, but also too, also too, Kieran, I suppose what's important here is that you know, uh, how we advocate. So we're, if, we, if we want our girls to be, to be physical, and stuff, then therefore they're probably going to make poor decisions because they feel they have to be making contact. We're not saying make the contact at the right time. That's all we're saying. Make the contact at the right time and be smarter. Here's another activity. Now this is just progressing on a small, but you see how it progressed it on, okay? There's a box here. You see there's a, red, a yellow cone, a red cone, there's a white cone, and another white cone, okay? So, the girl in blue is going to play the ball to the girl in green, okay? I want the girl in green to try and get to the, to the yellow cone. Reason being, because the girl in green is left-legged. So I told her, when you get the ball, you're left-legged, go to the yellow cone. But then I said to the girl in blue, how can you create a scenario whereby she doesn't get there, bearing on what we just did recently? And here's what happened. Sorry, guys. Apologies there now. Just want to play it there again. That's better, I will. She very cleverly knew that the girl was left-legged, okay, positioned herself. So she had two options. When she passed the ball to the girl in green, she could have went straight at her. She could have ran straight at her, probably went square in her footing, and the player would have bypassed her. 
was very clever. She knew she was left legged, so she cut out that angle, pushed her where she wanted to go, and she tackled with real patience. And watch what happens. X, uh, this is, watch it. Very clever. Very clever. Now I've got to tackle in. That's very clever uh, defending. And these girls are 12 and 13 years of age. Very clever. Because of the concepts that were brought in earlier in the earlier drills, now she's getting more clarity on that. Who about to carry cuteness, is it? Small bit, small bit. Now we're going to bring on to the goals. We're going to bring on to the goals. So I'm just trying to show you how it can be progressed on. These are very simplistic in nature, but the concept and the tackling technique is key. So watch it. Again, the girl in green is going to pass the ball to the girl in blue. The girl in blue is right legged. So she wants to come over here to kick a point. The girl in green knows she's right legged. So she's going to actually come up here to shut that out, push her over to the far sideline, and she takes the ball off her. Watch it. Very interesting. So watch it here. She comes up. The, she doesn't go to the center. Look what she's doing. She's waiting. She's waiting. Bang. That's very clever. She knows that she's right legged. She knows she wants to go in a certain direction. She runs at a, not directly at the player, she runs at a kind of slight angle to push her where she doesn't want to go. And then when the time comes, she gets her near hand in because the other girl is probably not used to walking off her left side. Just interesting concept and something to think about. Now here, the last one, before we, we, we go into the final slides. Warm up in pairs. In a lot of coaching sessions, before you warm up, you might do a lot of ball familiarization drills. What I mean by that, you might get them in twos and they do hand passing off the left, hand passing off the right, kick passing off the left, kick passing off the right, throwing the ball over their head on the ground, they're catching it. You might do a lot of ball familiarization drills. Here is something you could do before training or during training. You could decide. You can modify this any way you want to get that idea of constantly keeping in their mind the key coaching concepts around the tackle. So here's something that I got the girls to do just for, for a few seconds. Let's watch it. It's just practicing stepping in. How many times you ask girls to probably, you know, pass the ball and they're not stepping in, they're flat on their feet. It's good to get the step in, step in for the ball. Tap the ball. Just tap the ball. Three on your side. Off you go. Eye in the ball, step in, body at an angle. Okay, now knock the ball out of the hand. Excellent. Yeah, step in, knock the ball out of the hand. Excellent. Eye in the ball. Step in. They're on the balls of feet. Now we're coaching. Be on the balls of feet. Be light. Be active. You're now active. Okay, now go out now. Go out. Let's try this. Now come in. Jockey, stop. Get the ball. Take it. Something simple that you could do before every session. I actually do this with, uh, with, with my own group. They're a senior group, and we just do it at this pre-warm-up. So I just say, guys, get in twos. Ball for two. Off we go. Let's start practicing, you know, a good tackling technique. It just gets reminders of what we're trying to do. You're, you're training the brain as well, Willie Martin. As long as technique, you're training the brain to get that, get that you're train of thought. I, I suppose you're trying to make it a habit, aren't you? You're trying yeah. to make it a, a habit, um, Kieran. You're trying to make it a habit of your know, good practice, good technique, and constantly, yeah. But you need to keep repeating something mm -hmm. for something to become a habit. I think you know. And if you only do it once or twice. I don't know how you're going to get the impact out of it. And yeah. I suppose we as coaches can't be giving out to players about tackling, or referees for that matter, if we never practice it. Okay, and that's important. So we as coaches need to ensure that our players are, are well equipped. Let's go back to this game now. Let's go back to this game. This is interesting. There's three scenarios. And actually, it was a very good clip because just three scenarios seem to happen in one. So think back to the earlier game and think back to what we just learned now in the last few minutes. Okay, number eight, what would you have done differently? So, Kieran, I'd always ask you, number eight there, how would you have asked her to do different? So, in the first clip, let's watch this, okay? In the first clip, she dives in. Okay, and we watch again. So, we watch again. So, if I was asking you, number eight, so the midfielder, okay, the blue Kieran. How would you have done differently there? I, I know, Kieran, we haven't, uh, I suppose, rehearsed this, so I'm just going to put you on the spot. What would you have told number eight to do there? What one coaching point would you have told her to do? Number eight, blue. Number eight, white. white oh, sorry, white. Number, yeah, the girl. White, who, no. Here she number, is. Number eight, white, the, the player on the ball, sorry. No, the player off the ball. Off the ball. 
Well, she would have. First of all, she's she's leaving the whole centre open. Are you on but white or blue? Well, sorry. White. White. Number she's eight. left the whole the whole centre at number six centre back open. So she's dived in, and I would have took her back maybe 10, 15, 20 metres so that the centre position is not left open. And this I love. Well done. I think number one, let's think about it. Where was blue going? Was blue, and I'm just putting out all quotes, was blue a threat? No. She's her back face to the goal, and she's going the opposite direction. She's not a threat. White took the gamble by diving in, because she saw blue with the ball of the body to dive in. But look what the scenario has created, because she dived in, she missed the tackle. Now it's wide open. Now it's wide open. So yes, maybe coaching point could be, there's no need to tackle the player in that situation. I would probably, as you write, I would probably ask her just to stand back here and, and let her turn. Or I would probably say to number eight, why don't you run to the left of number eight, the blue? Why? Because blue number eight is right-legged. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, she'd want to turn right. So I would have said to number eight, white is actually, if you're going to run, run to left of her, get her, high, get her uh, line of sight, and turn her where she doesn't want to go. And now it's a different game. But that's just, there's loads of scenarios here we could come up with. Now what was happened? This is this here. Let's watch this. Number seven. So number eight, white is dived in. She's now in the game. She haven't said that though, she has come back very well shot, I'll show you. She's now in the game, she's dived in. Now, blue on the ball wants to go straight for goal. She's now straight for goal. Watch number seven. Number seven is probably blind, just a bit worried about number 10 who's out here in the shadow. But what could we say number seven? Number seven, you know, okay, number eight's going to dive in, my, my car, if she misses, if I were her, I would probably go one meter to the right, so that if blue does turn, we're going to push her. We're going to push her down here. We're going to push her away from goal. We're going to push her down the line. But because she's worried about number 10, her positioning, her feet are now all over the shop. She's now trying to, remember what I said earlier on about that square? She's now trying to reconfigure her body to get back at number eight, which we'll see in a minute, and let's see what happens. She's now diving with her far hand. Her near hand is following the player because it's on the back. She tried to grapple at her, and she's now committed a foul. But what could she have done differently, even in the scenario she was in? She could have just ran beside her and said, OK, look, I'm not going to attack you here, but I'm going to try and stay with you and push you out towards the stand. Because I know you like to kick with your right leg, and I know you want to go straight down here. But you know what? I'm going to push you out here. I'm going to run beside you and push you somewhere where you don't want to go. But she dived in. Now she's out of the game. Two players out of the game, one foul. Okay, so if the ball breaks down, we get the ball back. Now let's see the next scenario. Here we have number 15. Here's the player running at you. 100 miles an hour. She's right, legged. She wants to go either straight or she'll go right. What we want to do is push her to the left. Watch what number 15 does. She dives in, she squares in her feet, and she grapples her with both hands. Free. Look what the blue is trying to do, as I said. She's trying to go on to her right. A bit of advice for number 15 is listen, go to an angle, go to the, 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 the left, or your left, her right, and push her down towards the stand. Don't dive in. Jockey backwards because she's coming at real pace and push her towards the stand. Because she's coming so fast and you're flat footed, you will foul. But having said that, I spoke earlier on about the white raid. Look how well she's come back. And she's the reason why number eight blue didn't go down the center. Watch what she does and goes back to the point I'm trying to make is she didn't make a tackle, but her running and her positions and pushed her out the wing eventually. Off we go. Watch it. Because she ran beside her and she blocked up where she wanted to go, number, sorry, blue number 11 had to go towards the stand. But in that scenario, two fouls were given away when possibly there was no need to foul in the instance outside and also that player coming at you. So all I'm trying to do is get you to reflect on that scenario and think about your own situations. When is the right time to tackle? 
and where's the right time not? Is better, is better positioning better than tattling? Is positioning your body in a way to push the player where they want to go better than making contact? Two made contact, two freeze. That ball was called back, that was a free, that was over the bar. But the scenario could have been so different. White midfielder could have not dived in, just ran to the left and pushed number 11 blue to the right. Okay, that didn't work out. Maybe number seven says, don't worry about number 10, because number 10 is out there anyway. If she gets the ball, she's no danger. Don't worry about number 10. But I just position myself. I know she's going to turn to the right. If my colleague doesn't get her, she's going to turn to the right. I'm just going to step one in and push her down the line. And I'll run beside her and see, can I, can I get her in? That didn't work out. Okay, so she, she dived in. Then the player number 15 is going, oh my God, she's coming at me at 100 miles an hour. What do I do? She dived in, but no, all she do is get the jockey position, take a step back as she's coming towards her and push her where she didn't want to go, which is out to the stand. Okay, so I hope that just gave you brought it all together in terms of, you know, in terms of when to tackle, when not to tackle. Patience is important, body position is important. Sometimes not making contact, you get more benefit out of making contact. So just, just think about that. So I'm going to go to the final piece um, regarding deliberate contact, high tackle and charging. This is the last piece, guys. So we're about three or four slides left. And I hope you're, you're, you're gaining a lot from, from our webinar this evening. And Kieran, if there's anything coming through, you can let me know. Yeah. So the, the final piece here, guys, is deliberate contact, high tackle and charging. The rules are there's no deliberate contact in these football. No deliberate body contact. Yes, there will be contact because two people go for a ball, there's going to be a clash of bodies. That's going to happen. That's football. But even that's deliberate is a foul. So deliberately putting your hand on the, on the arm to dispossess a player. Deliberately putting your hand on the body trying to get the ball off a player. That's deliberate. Deliberate shoulder charge. That's deliberate. If you're doing a near hand tackle and the two hits come together, that's not deliberate. That's not a foul. Okay? High tackle. Anywhere above the chest area is deemed as a high tackle, okay? And that's very much important. And I'll show you a few clips in that a minute. And then we did deliberate high tackle. So let's show you a few clips before we finish off and give you a better understanding. So all you do as a coach, all you need to know is the following. The movement of the player, the intent, and the force. That's what a referee watches out for. The movement of the player, the intent, and the force. That's what they're watching out for. So let's look at two clips here to show you this. So here is a deliberate shoulder charge. Here we go. So watch the girl in the green gold and the girl in the blue. Now think about this and going back to what we learned earlier on. There is no possible need for the girl in green and gold, gold to tackle the girl in blue. Because look where she gets the ball and look where she's facing. Okay, but look what happens as a result. That's a deliberate shoulder charge. The movement of the player towards the girl in blue, she deliberately made contact free. Now that's an easy free from the 13 meter line over the bar. But look where she was getting the ball. She was getting the ball out the wing, facing towards the stand. She had loads of help. Look, one, two, three. There was no need to pass in that scenario tackle. It's just something to be aware of again. When is the right time to make contact? And when is not the right time? In particular, in the scoring zone, you don't want to be making deliberate contact. We move it on. Here is a high tackle in yellow football. So here it is. Again, movement of the player. Okay, this is a yellow card. It wasn't deemed very forceful. So it's a yellow card. So it's a high tackle. Okay, so here's a high tackle again. I'll show it to you again. Here she comes in. Again, there hand across but i always say is look at the scenario was there a need to make contact in that situation possibly not one two three four four fights around the player on the ball in a scoring area possibly no need to make contact was it could have been the end of the game was it just a lazy tackle no need for it whereby if they stood their ground and dispossess the player or even turn the player, it would have been a lot more beneficial. Here's the final one in terms of the high tackle. 
So here we have it with the me, me up here on the ball. And watch. That's a red card because the force and the intent was greater than the one previous. That's a red card offence because the force of the player blew onto the bear player was, was, was far greater. But again, was it necessary? Sorry, before we go into the last slide. Was it necessary? Here we go. I just, I'm going to pause if I can at the right time just to kind of give you an understanding of what I'm trying to say here. Watch it. She's right-legged. The male player will want to dink right to go left because she wants to come back into the center. Low the space. Look at all the players around. Push, look, she's going that direction down the line. The cabin player, body positioning feet are probably not where they want to be, hence why maybe had to tackle. But can you imagine if she just pushed a small bit to the right, that player would have continued to go down the line. Possibly would have got squeezed into a, a cul-de-sac or maybe had to turn. Because of poor body, uh, body positioning and feet, she lunges in and commits a foul. But watch the mirror player. All players want to go back into the center. Bang, red card. Again, I'm going back to was it necessary? Could it be avoided? Final slide tonight. I'm going to just show you this clip for two, two and a half minutes, and it's on the, on the, the whole year of charging, because I know in the questions that came up on the ball. So here is a small clip on charging and give you a better understanding of saying. Kironic, let me know if the sound is good or bad or whatever. Yeah. The charge. It is important as a coach or a referee to understand the differences in the levels of charge and what. Oh, sorry. What a referee would be expected to award for each of these. With this short clip, we will have a look at the different levels of charge according to the LGFA official guide. In the official guide, charging is mentioned in three areas. Under non-technical fouls, you will see charging of an opponent. This is where a player will get a free awarded against them and will be ticked or noted by the referee. Under the yellow card section, you will see charging of an opponent with the shoulder to the upper body. In this case, a player will be sin binned in line with the yellow card offence. And under the red card section, you will see deliberate charge, including frontal charge or jumping at an opponent, colleague or official. In this case, a player will be awarded a straight red card and will be sent off the field of play. So what does a referee need to look out for when deciding what offence of a charge the player has committed? The referee will look for the movement of the player involved. So did they make a movement directly towards the player who is about to tackle them or in the case of a player who does not have the ball directly towards the player who is coming with the ball. They will also look at the intent that player had in relation to the charge and then of course the force of the charge. So depending on the combination of these three, the movement of the player, the intent of the player and the force in which they use will help the referee decide if this should be just a foul a yellow card or a red card and some of the videos to follow will assist you in this decision making. Final thing to remember in relation to the card is it does not matter if the player has the ball or does not have the ball in their possession. A player with the ball can charge into a defender while a player without the ball can charge into somebody coming with the ball. So it is not whether they have the ball or not, it is if they commit the charge. The first clip is in relation to the non-technical foul. So in this case, you will see that the player charges, but for the referee, they are looking at the intent, the movement of the player and the force. You will see that the player does charge, but there is not great force and not huge intent. So in this case, the player just has a free awarded against them and they will be noted.
You can take a second to look at this again. Envelope of charge is for a yellow card offence. And in this case, you will see the charging of an opponent with the shoulder to the upper body. If you look at this video, the player goes in. There is not huge force, but there is intent and there is motion of the player into the defender. So in this case, it is a yellow card offence. And the final mention of charging in our official guide is deliberate charge, including frontal charge or jumping at an opponent or colleague. In this clip, you will see there is greater intent, force, and the player moves directly in the position of the defender. If you watch clearly, you will see all three combining together. <clears throat> so the player in this stage will have a free awarded against them, but also a straight red card. So to summarize the three of them, you need to look out for the force of the player, the intent they had, and the direction. A defender has every right to be in the position that they are standing in. A player coming attacking towards them must make an effort to move out of their way. So guys, to, to, I hope you enjoyed that uh, clip to keep a kind of a, a good understanding of what does charging look like and, and the rules pertaining to charge. So it's good to have that. So look, to finish off, uh, look, there is uh, on our website, www.ladiesgaelic uh, forward slash learn, we have loads of skills, cards and videos and a lot of good videos around, you know, the tackling videos and stuff that you can use. Our pen magazine, we have our weekly newsletter, a lot of good stuff there, guys. So if you want to go dive more into more, into more drills and activities they're available to you. But I always say, keep it simple, keep it basic, don't overthink it. Technique is key, keep practicing technique, that's probably, and then keep the activities simplistic, don't probably have to overcomplicate it either. We also have the GA e-learning website, which is excellent for activities as well, guys. It has activities for all age groups. It has videos of the activities. It has videos for tackling, for soldering, for blocking, whatever you need, it is there. Gives a description of the activity, as I said, a descriptor and also a video. So again, explore all these guys. Loads of activities and, and drills there to, to, to look into as well. That's www.learning.ga.e forward slash planner. But as I said, keep it simple. Uh, don't overcomplicate things, okay, regarding the tackle as well. So look, that's basically, that, that's, it, that's it from me. But I would like you in the, in the chat function, if you don't mind, uh, just before we, we, we leave this evening, if there's one thing you took home from, or took one home point for tonight, or one thing you took from tonight's webinar, what is it? So if you don't mind, uh, you can put that into, in, into, the, um, into the chat. But also, if you have any questions or queries before we leave, then you can put them into the Q&A, and Kiran would look at them, and we'll answer yeah. as many as we can. So there's two things there. What did you learn from tonight? You can put it into the chat function. And if you have any questions or answers or, or any questions you like to ask, put into the Q&A function and Kieran will monitor that for me. Thank you very much, guys. So we'll give you a few seconds. Just from doing that, well, just a few people are going on about referees and interpretation of the rules. Guys, referees have actually been rules refresher. I actually sat in a webinar last week with Third Idol, and this is covered as well about the, the front of the charge, the interpretation of the tackles, and the referees actually have to do an online assessment. So. The referees in all 32 counties will just to back up are covered in terms of the, the rules of the game, the refresher, and just to back up, coaches make mistakes, kids, referees make mistakes, and our players make mistakes, so you have to just be aware of that at all times in a game, so without that fire girl in the middle, our games wouldn't be played. I think that's a very good point made, and I think what's, going back to my original point, to know in terms of everybody has responsibility, don't they, Kieran? We all have a responsibility, and I always say is don't question something unless you're 100% clear as yourself. You know, and a lot of times we probably, you know, I always say in terms of the tackling stuff, that's something that, you know, do we really know exactly what we should be looking for? And that's that, but I think referees, and our, our colleague here, Dowdall, is doing great work on the refereeing development side of things, uh, doing a lot of very good, you know, work there with existing referees, new referees, experienced referees. And all we're trying to do, everybody's trying to do is get consistency. But all you can do as a coach is control what you do. 
And you know what you can do is just, you know, coach the players within the rules of the game and that's all you can control. And after that, then we'll try and, and work on all other areas. So what's going back to uh, you on, a lot on of the people, Just more thank yous about the night, about the feet position, about coming in and angle instead of being front on in, in terms of that there, that there, they took a lot away from that tonight. Just a few people asking about the timing, about the videos. I just said it'd be available on our YouTube channel within the next few days because I think people want to go through the videos again. Them videos are key, Will, to send the yeah. message. That's and right, John. So the, all these this, videos, guys, this webinar tonight is being recorded and will be available as of tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah, so you can go back in your own time and look at the videos again. Yeah, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be available. So uh, myself and Kiran's uh, reception there a few weeks ago wasn't the greatest, so yeah. hopefully tonight uh, we, we achieve it better. Is there anything else, Kiran, coming up? Uh, Sean, coming in there, Sean, just keep it simple, guys, and practice practice tackle more often. And myself and Tudor, well, yeah, guilty. We have to do it more often. One of the skills of the game that we... Probably neglect, and that's being honest. Is there any years. questions? Any questions people have to ask? Sorry, or? just going to the Q and A. No, no questions. Well, it's just all thank yous and comments, general comments about the the feet position, and more thank yous. Well, that's it. Okay, so on that note, first of all, uh, Kieran, thank you very much for 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 tonight. And John's great. We delivered one a few weeks ago, and John, we made a few amendments, so hopefully people got the maximum benefit out of it tonight in terms of the quiz. So thank you very much, Kieran, for for hosting tonight. Really enjoyed working with you on this project. We feel it's an area that you know, you know, a lot of people like to learn a bit more of. Hence why we record it tonight. We're going to get it out there tomorrow. Please, guys, share with everybody. You know, the more we can get our message out there, the more consistent we get in terms of our game and, and, and how we how we uh, the flow of our game as well. So, on behalf of myself, uh, Kieran, before I go, yeah, yeah, just thank you for allowing me to present. I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and it's probably something will when things do start to clear up in terms of COVID, we'd like to do a sec live out in maybe different uh, provinces throughout the length and breadth of Ireland. So that'll be our next, hopefully come the autumn time, but fingers crossed if everything's That's going right. smoothly, we'll we right. get out on in the clubs and counties and maybe deliver some of these workshops live. That's our next plan. Though. Yeah, it will be to kind of go in front of practice sites and to show all those drills in the practice since. But I suppose the one message I could have to everybody is, look, we've been waiting three months to get back on the field. Don't overcomplicate it. Enjoy it. Have fun. You know, enjoy it while we have it. And that's key, and I learned that. Yeah. So just don't take the good out of football training now. Enjoy, keep it simplistic. So on behalf of myself and, and Kiran, we hope you enjoyed tonight's webinar. Um, and look, best look over the coming weeks on the field of play. Keep enjoying what you're doing. And uh, we'll be back soon with another topic, hopefully. So that's basically it. That's it from us. Thank you. Bye-bye yeah. now.